Well, have you ever thought about how to improve your life? How to make your life better? You get stuck in a rut. You keep recycling the same junk. Uh, I'm going to quickly summarize seven steps to a, a better life, even seven steps to your best life. Uh, these steps we've been working on for the last uh, month or so, they're from Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 to 19, and the seven steps to improve your life is considered to be things that you do that are negative. You don't want to do these negative things. They're the things that you do that God hates. As a matter of fact, the seven things are an absolute do not do these things. Uh, here's Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. It says very clearly, there are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are an abomination to him. And then the first thing that you don't want to do, you don't want to have haughty eyes or arrogant eyes. You want to have humble, humble eyes. And the second thing is a lying tongue. Uh, and that's just, you just everywhere you go, you lie. Words come out of your mouth that are not true. That'll mess up your life. And then the third is hands that shed innocent blood. You never want to move toward physical violence. You never want to physically uh, harm anyone. And then the fourth is you don't want to have a heart that devises wicked plans. You don't want to inside premeditate. You don't want to create in your mind ways to hurt people, slander people, uh, mess up your life. You know, the thoughts that you have that are bad or evil. And then the fifth way to mess up your life is to run to evil. There are things that God says is right and things that are God says is good. Run to good. Run away from evil. And then the sixth way, the sixth thing that God says don't do, in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 19, it says, a false witness who declares lies. Now, this is different from the second step I said about a lying tongue. In verse 19, a false witness who declares lies, this is someone who knowingly uh, lies. Maybe they're, they're being confronted. It could be in a courtroom, but it could be by a friend, but they knowingly perjure. They knowingly uh, try to scam you. They knowingly when you're confronted, you keep saying lies. I'm suggesting that the seventh way, according to verse 19, is that you don't want to do this. You don't want to spread strife among brothers. So as, as a family member or as a friend, you want to be helpful toward the people around you, your close family members. You don't want to be evil toward family or evil toward your friends or your co-workers. What you have here in Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 to 19 are seven steps to a negative life, your worst life. If you turn these around and turn them positive, number one, humble eyes or kind 
or eyes that care. Number two, not a lying tongue, but a tongue words that are truth. And number three, stop yelling, stop violence, the physical violence. That's not an option if you want to have your best life. And number four, don't create evil in your mind. Don't plan to do evil. Number five, run away from evil. Don't run to evil. And number six, a false witness who declare lies, only the truth, only speak truth, never lie. And then the seventh is one who spreads strife among brothers. Uh, never bring evil. Never speak evil uh, regarding your family, your close friends. Only love, only truth. So let's focus on the sixth way, the sixth step to a better life, the sixth step to your best life, and that is no lies, only truth. When someone comes to you, whether you're in a courtroom legally or not, what comes out of your mouth should always be truth, no lies. Never knowingly lie. So re remind yourself, if, if you're doing simple math and you're doing it the right way, one plus one always equals two. Two plus two always equals four. The laws of math cannot lie. The laws of math are consistent. Consider this sixth way, only truth. You should always operate in the law of truth. Never let a lie, never knowingly lie. In other words, don't change the truth. Don't falsify anything. In other words, if you know the truth and someone asks you about the truth, if you want your best life, only bring out the truth. Practice going forward in your better life. Never knowingly lie. It's one thing to not have knowledge about a subject because you didn't study that subject. But it's another thing to have knowledge about a given subject or situation or a conflict and knowingly spread falsehood, a lie. Let me give you some practical thoughts. Truth will always set you free. A lie will always bind you up mentally, emotionally. Truth is liberating. God has created truth. God defines truth. God says this is true and this is a lie. When you study God, when you study the Bible, when you study scripture, you discover a lie, that's a lie, that's not truth, that's a lie. You can manipulate uh, information, you can manipulate facts. Matter of fact, in our society, we change the facts. Discover what the Bible says is true or right or good or agreeable to God and identify what is not. Walk in the truth and the truth will set you free. Hardest thing in the world for any person is only truth.
Because you have to second, I'm going to give you a second suggestion. You have to discover what is truth in this particular challenge or situation. That means you have to go and research. And a lot of people just don't want to research. They're, they're angry. They, they, they're trying to manipulate things. They're knowingly lying. But discover what is right, what is true versus what is false. And commit only to speak the truth all the time, anywhere, no matter what the consequences are. Be committed to the truth. And the Bible says again and again, and the truth will set you free. This is uh, number three. This, this takes us back to who determines truth. The Bible says God determines truth. I don't. You don't. But we get so possessed, we get so uh, invested in ourselves or something else that we begin to change the truth. The truth was A and we don't, we want to move truth over into B or C or we want to deny A because we want Z. Don't knowingly change the facts. Simple. Let God determine the facts. Let God determine what is true, what is correct, versus you. In other words, don't don't be in conflict with God. You see, speaking a lie to someone else, you might cover that up. But you can never cover up. You can never get away with knowingly lying to God. God knows. God understands everything. God is fully involved in your life. He knows the good, the bad, and the ugly, and everybody else's life. And God has a standard, and God does not change the standard of what is true, what is right, what is good, what is pure, on any given day. It's consistent. These seven steps to a better life are in the ballpark 3,000 years old. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. Uh, you, you go back maybe a few hundred years, a uh, few hundred years approximately more, and you get to the Ten Commandments. Another set of ways to improve, to have your best life. Let me give you another practical suggestion. Don't get guy. Never knowingly change the facts. Your best life is always with God. Your best life is always studying the Bible, discovering what God says is right and wrong, and only speaking truth. Practical suggestion, His truth, not your truth. Live your life in such a way that you never knowingly change the facts. That can be in a conversation with someone. That can be uh, in a short-term relationship or a long-term relationship. That can be in a court of law. Never knowingly change the facts. Uh, give me, let me give you another practical suggestion. If you're in a situation and you knowingly lie... 
understand that there's damage being done. Understand that there is always harm when a lie is knowingly advanced. Can I just suggest to you, if you're in a situation and you manipulate the facts on purpose, quickly go and admit the truth. Because once that lie goes out of your mouth and you knowingly, purposely lie, that lie is circulating in the culture. That lie is like uh, a tornado bringing destruction. That lie is also another simple practical application. is like a boomerang. It will come back and hurt you. That lie that you sent out to hurt others will cycle back and bring harm to you. How that will happen, I don't know. But never knowingly lie. And if you knowingly lie, quickly admit it. That means go to the first person that you told that lie to and confess. And make sure that you get all of the, the lies out on the table. It's interesting. People have this tendency to distort, to manipulate, to cover up, to, to, to change the story. Your best life is always speaking the truth. But when you knowingly lie, that lie goes out quickly. Go to the person that you said that lie to, and it may be more than one person. It may be two, three, four, five individuals. And quickly correct yourself. I'm encouraging you, your best life is living all the time in truth. I'm encouraging you, your best life is always speaking the truth. Never knowingly lie. No lies, only the truth. The Bible says a false witness who declares lies. Isn't it amazing how we can declare this is the truth when really it may be part of the truth, but we knowingly declare partially a lie? It may be to cover something up. It may be to protect self. It may be to protect someone else. Remember, God sees, God hears, God knows. You can't run from God. You can't manipulate God. I'm encouraging you in this walk and talk. No lies, only the truth. I'm encouraging you, your best life, whether you're in a courtroom about to perjure yourself, knowingly lie to a judge, or knowingly lie to a friend, walk away. If that lie comes out, quickly tell the truth. The truth will always set you free. Let me give you a practical example. Uh, in the last week, I've had a couple of situations where it, it just took forever to get to the truth. Uh, may I just remind you, uh, it doesn't matter uh, what the situation is. You could be homeless, as this homeless person was that I worked with. You can be a young, college-age 
person, middle-aged, or you can be older. Run to truth. You say, Roger, when I speak the truth, and I try to do it in love or in kindness, uh, it gets messy. Speaking the truth in love will often be messy. But you want to run to the truth. You want to run to love. You don't want to knowingly promote a lie to anyone. These individuals that I worked with this last week, the lies that they were committing were constantly, continually uh, creating anxiety for them. Uh, this one lady I, I, who was wanting some, some, uh, some money, I asked what her name was, and she kept giving me a different name. Uh, and you could just tell she didn't want to speak the truth. Now, we can rationalize that it's that, and justify that the lady can just keep lying. No, you can't. The young man who lacked self motivation, who, who struggled with laziness had a whole list of, as I said to him, lies. He, he was simply in bondage with discouragement because he wasn't living in truth, but lies. Uh, another individual, uh, very much on the verge of a panic attack just came right out and just said I'm, I'm really struggling and his, the inner world his, the emotions inside uh, the discouragement was keeping him from living by the truth when the Bible says the truth will set you free, remind yourself only the truth will set you free. Never knowingly lie. No lies, only truth in front of a judge or in front of your friends or anyone in your life. This is Walk and Talk 195. It's January 25th uh, we for the last few weeks we've been working on steps to your best life and in Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 to 19 you probably want to read them every day or at least once a week Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 to 19 there's seven steps to your best life but they're stated in the negative and we've gone from a negative statement we've turned it to a positive statement uh, verse 17 it says haughty eyes will mess up your life in other words prideful superior I'm right eyes and you're wrong a lying tongue meaning words that come out of your mouth there's just there's no truth at all you, Hands that shed innocent blood, you've got an anger problem, you're violent. A heart that devises wicked plans in your mind, you, you scheme how to hurt people. Oh. And then feet that run rapidly, rapidly to evil. Don't, don't plan to do evil. Don't, don't hurry up to hurt people. Slow down. Evaluate, be patient. And then a false witness who declares lies, that's, 
That's a situation that we talked about. No lies, only truth. That's where you lie upon lie. Under oath, you lie upon lie. One lie, and then the next lie to cover up the other lie, then another lie. And you knowingly lie. Next Thursday, uh, we'll work on the seventh uh, step to your best life. And that is to never spread strife among people close to you, family members, co-workers, friends, other Christians. This is Walk and Talk 195. We invite you to worship with us this coming Sunday, uh, First Baptist Church, Tempe, Arizona, 4525 South McClintock at 930 or 11 for our worship service services and then we have bible classes small groups eight o'clock 9 30 11 throughout the week we have on sunday morning and throughout the week classes for men for women there's youth for teen classes we have on sunday we have children's programs uh, throughout the week sometimes we'll have them for children's programs we invite you to to join us uh, the church website is fbc-tempe.org uh, and the church phone number is 480-839-0926 if we can encourage if we can point you to truth more than willing to do that just uh, let us know how we can help Have a great day.